will come to a proof that the derivative of sine x with respect to x equals cosine x. We'll be using the definition of the derivative shown here below, where f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of the difference quotient. So applying the definition of derivative for f of x equals sine x, we'd have the limit as h approaches zero of f of the quantity x plus h would be sine of the quantity x plus h, and then we'd have minus f of x, or minus sine x, all divided by h. Now we want to expand sine of the quantity x plus h using the sum identity for sine shown here below for reference, where sine of a plus b is equal to sine a times cosine b plus cosine a times sine b. In our case, a equals x and b equals h. So when we expand sine of the quantity x plus h, we end up with sine x times cosine h plus cosine x times sine h. Now for the next step, we're going to change the order of these three terms in the numerator. Notice here we wrote cosine x sine h first, followed by minus sine x, and then finally plus sine x cosine h. Now notice how these two terms here in the numerator do share a common factor of sine. So now we're going to factor out negative sine x from these two terms. We won't factor the first term. So when we do this, notice how if we factor out negative sine x from sine x, we're left with positive one. If we factor out negative sine x from positive sine x cosine h, we're left with negative or minus cosine h. And of course we can check this by distributing Notice how negative sine x times one is negative sine x, and negative sine x times negative cosine h is sine x cosine h. And now for the next step, we'll write this single fraction as a difference of two fractions, where both fractions have a denominator of h. So now we have the limit as h approaches zero of cosine x sine h divided by h minus sine x times the quantity one minus cosine h divided by h. Now take this line to the next slide. We have two special limits hidden within these two fractions. To better recognize them, let's write the factor of cosine x in front of the fraction and write the factor of sine x in front of the second fraction. From here, because we have a limit of a difference, we can write this as a difference of two limits. And because cosine x and sine x are not affected by h, we can factor cosine x and sine h out of the two limits. So here notice how we factored out cosine x and we're left with the limit as h approaches zero of sine h divided by h. And then we have minus, we factored out sine x, so we have sine x times the limit as h approaches zero of one minus cosine h divided by h. At this point we need to recognize we have two special limits here shown below for reference. The limit as h approaches zero of sine h divided by h is equal to one and the limit as h approaches zero of the quantity one minus cosine h divided by h is equal to zero. So we have cosine x times one minus sine x times zero, which simplifies nicely to just cosine x. So now we have our proof. We've proven the derivative of sine x with respect to x equals cosine x. And before we go, let's take a look at the graph of sine x and cosine x on the same coordinate plane. Here we have f of x equals sine x graphed in blue, and f prime of x equals cosine x graphed here in red. It's pretty amazing that the cosine function values give us the slopes of the tangent lines to our sine function. Notice how where the derivative function or the cosine function is equal to zero, here and here, the slopes of the tangent lines to the sine function are zero, meaning we have horizontal tangent lines. Notice here we have a horizontal tangent line as well as here. Notice how where we have a horizontal tangent line, we have a high point or a low point on our function f of x equals sine x. We'll be talking more about this in the near future. I hope you found this helpful.